All right, every time I load up an orchestral suite, I'm talking like a full orchestra. My computer might as well be billowing steam out of itself. There's so much that we do to try and save our CPU processing power, to try and calm our computer's fan down. Maybe multi-timbral voices in Logic are what's gonna help you out. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer. Welcome back to the channel. All right, we've all had those sessions that we just push too far. We just ask too much of it. We throw too many instruments at our session and it just spits the dummy. It won't open or it won't load or you get the dreaded CPU overload message. Something like that's gonna probably happen to you at some point in your musical life. Typically we start reaching for things like audio freeze track or something like that to reduce CPU pressure on our computer. There may actually be a solution though in your own workflow, in the way that we're using Logic Pro. One of these methods might be multi-timbral voices for your instruments. So instead of using multiple instruments, you can use one and load up lots of sample libraries inside it. Let's take a look at that today. Okay, so typically how it goes is you want to load up an individual instrument. You load up an individual instrument plugin and whatever kind of reverb or EQ or compression or whatever you want on that instrument, right? And you've got to do that multiple times for all the instruments you use. Sometimes rock and pop tracks or uh, electronic music production tracks might not have as many tracks and you can get away with quite a lot. But as you start fleshing those productions out, you start adding lots of layers or you dive into the world of orchestral music, there are multiple tracks, multiple libraries that you need to load up and this puts a huge amount of pressure on your computer. So if you imagine an orchestra for a moment, right? There are a lot of different sections and a lot of different players in each of those sections. Let's take strings, for example. You've got five different string parts in that string section. They each require their own track and their own instrument. Not all the time will they just be playing long held notes or legato passages. Maybe sometimes you want staccato. Sometimes you want pizzicato or tremolo or different sort of textures, right? Key switching is fine and that's a good sort of process, but sometimes people want to see each track, right? You want to see a legato track, a tremolo track, a pizzicato track or whatever. Every one of those is another instrument you're adding and your CPU is just going to get overloaded. Sometimes as well, you want to layer two different string libraries together, have a legato library of one and a legato library of another and merge them together. That is two separate plugins, again, playing one part. So you can see how this kind of builds up very quickly, right? Like there are lots and lots of different tracks that you're gonna end up fleshing out your whole session over. You might try and load them all in one hit, or you might be progressively adding them, but eventually you'll hit this barrier where you're asking your computer to process too much. So let's take a look at this example. In this first group here, I have violins one, two, violas, cellos, and basses. And each one of these tracks has its own contact sampler loaded up on it. Each one is loading up a Spitfire Studio Strings library. So this one, the violins one, obviously there'll be violins two, violas, cellos, and basses here and they're all pretty much running legato at the moment. If I open up the mixer, you can actually see this is the whole group here, all five instruments, and they've each got contact on there. Now this is just strings. Now we're gonna add brass, we're gonna add percussion, we're gonna add woodwinds, and then maybe you're doing a hybrid orchestration, so you've got guitars in there and drum sounds and you know risers and effects and all sorts of things, right? That it becomes really demanding. My computer kind of hits the roof every time I ask it to do an orchestral score. <laughs> just because it's just too much stuff, just too many too many samples for it to handle. Now we've only got five here because we've got one instrument per instrument part in the string section. However, as I said before, a different articulations are required for each instrument. So violins one might need legato and staccato. Now at this point, I know what you're thinking, key switching. Just use key switching and you'll just be able to use the one library for multiple articulations. That's all well and good, but you have to keep track of key switches that you make. You have to make sure that you start and end each section with the right key switch. So if you start playing from different parts of the track, it's not gonna you know, have the wrong articulation. Sometimes as well, if you're skipping between different sections and you're using key switches, you're gonna end up hearing the wrong articulation at different times because it just, it doesn't play back correctly. So key switches can be a bit of a nightmare. That's what I'm sort of saying here. What I prefer to do and what a lot of people prefer to do is have a separate track per articulation. That also has some benefits as well beyond just clearing this up in your own mind. When you export MIDI to scoring programs like Dorico or Sibelius or Staffpad or something like that, there are some benefits if you've broken up the articulations. Dorico recently did an update, for example, where now you can export your MIDI from your DAW session 
into Dorico and tell it what track is staccato, what track is legato, but still have it all go to the one violin part. So there's a benefit to having them on separate tracks. Now, normally what I would do is come in here, I would duplicate, and I'd label this one legato or something like that, label this one staccato, and in here, in this one, I'd load up and make sure it's in legato, and this one I would change to the staccato option. So that's something like this one over here. Now though, we can see we've already got six libraries and you can imagine that it's gonna to grow to 10 if we just want two articulations per section here. So this builds up very quickly and we've suddenly got 10 programs running, 10 plugins that are actually running this session. Here's how it could look. If I open up this multi timbral library, essentially what's happening here is I've got the same five parts. But if we look down at the mixer, there is only one track. And this is because each one of these tracks relates to one single track that has only one instance of contact running. And when I open up contact, all five of my libraries are loaded up in here. Now this is using something called multi timbral libraries. When you go to the plus button and you go to software instrument, you can check on multi timbral parts and you can tell it how many parts you want. So in this case, I gave it five, but it can do anything up to 16. What's happening here is it's using the 16 different MIDI channels. If you're familiar with MIDI, you know that MIDI has 16 channels and you can send different things down different channels. So basically each track is sending on channel one or channel two or channel three and whatever. That means that when you play your keyboard, it's sending it to a particular channel and inside contact, each one of those libraries is set to a different channel. So we can actually see that here. We can see MIDI channel A1, MIDI channel A2. So that's MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two. We've got three and four and so on. So each one of these is controlled by a separate MIDI channel. This is great because basically you've got one contact instance running all five sample libraries, which means only one plugin is running. Yes, it still has to call up the samples. Yes, it still has to process all of them in time. You're not gonna get around that. However, imagine it like this. If you're the cashier at a retail store, right? And someone comes up to you and gives you a list of things that they want. You can work through that list, grab them all up and, and pass it to that person, right? Now imagine 16 people coming and just yelling over the top of each other, all demanding something different. That's essentially what you're doing to a computer when you're loading up multiple of the same plugin. You've got potentially five different contact plugins, all requesting MIDI performance. Well, really one contact can just coordinate the whole thing and make it much more seamless. Now there are some downsides to this. We, for example, here, if I try to slide up and down the volume of one of these, you can see the whole lot is going up and down. So not really ideal for different instrumental parts. The way I actually tend to use this is one of two ways. The first one here is I divide out my articulations per instrument. So I have a violins group and then this one multi-channel, multi-timbral part, which has got four here for four different articulations. Let's open up the contact in here. You can see the same library has been loaded four times, but I've selected different articulations based on my needs. So this is a really simple way to be able to collapse everything into one plugin. So now instead of using key switching, which can be a little bit finicky, you've still got tracks laid out separately, so it's nice and convenient, but they all contribute to one track. It's sort of the best world between having dedicated tracks and having key switches. It's sort of a, a point in the middle, really. Because it's all one instrument, turning up and down the level individually on each one of these articulations really isn't necessary. And to be honest, I can just come in here and turn up and down the level on my instruments if I want to. Now, the other use for this is, as I said, layering two different types of instruments together, maybe two different string libraries bringing together as one. Let's actually create a part now and look at how I would do this. So I'm gonna come up to my plus here. I'm gonna go into multi timbral libraries under the software instrument. I'm just gonna request two because all I'm gonna do is just gonna gel two of them together. I'm not gonna go nuts on this one. All right, so now I've done that, I'll hit create and we can see it's brought up my contact, which is what I requested for it to insert in the instrument slot. And it's got two different tracks. First one here is channel one, second one here is channel two. Now you would have seen before, I've been putting everything into groups and that's just my preferred organization method. So I would grab both of these and pop it into maybe a summing stack. And that way it's in a nice group and I can label this one violins, something like that. All right, so now I'm gonna add in my two different instrument libraries. I'll go back to the studio strings from before and we'll load in the violins. Awesome. Now I'm gonna type in something from Heaviosity, Novo Strings. 
And I'm just going to jump into their traditional violin section. Here you can see both libraries have been loaded up. We got part one and part two. And if I have this one selected when I hit play, it plays the first library. When I have this second one selected, it plays the second library. But when I have both of them selected, or this whole group, it plays both. And that's what I really love about it, is that now I can record my MIDI on the group and it will play all of those textures. Just another useful feature of multi-timbral. So, I hope that saves your CPU a little bit. Maybe prevents you having to put out any fires from overheating. Maybe it's just going to open you up to other workflows, other options for you to try when you're writing. Sometimes speed and efficiency are the most important thing in your workflow. When you're under the pump and you've got to knock something out really quickly, you don't want to be bogged down in technical stuff or adding groups or adding things. Maybe setting up multi-tambral libraries and then saving those as presets so you can recall at any time is going to be a huge time saver for you. However you end up using this, I hope that it just helps you a little bit. And that's what all this is for. I share plenty of these videos all the time, so you might want to consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the next one. I really hope to see you in the next video, so I will catch you there.